We are here because we are dedicated to helping the entire CrossFit community. Determined to elevate coaches, box owners, athletes, and everything in between, we believe that this mission will begin right here, right now. While this time and this goal begins with you, our hope is that you take this fire ignited within you and weave it into your own life with the same unrelenting passion to give those you have the privilege of coming in contact with the best hour of their day. There we go. So we've got double guests today, Caroline Lambry. I say that right? Yep. Along with Jeff Adler. So there's so much I want to dive into with you guys because you being from Canada, I, I definitely want to talk all about that. And I also want to talk about the difference in competing with five people and 40 people. And I also want to talk about your your coaching relationship, how that works out. Sound, sound <laughs> good maybe, well, based on that laugh, maybe we should uh, begin right there. So <laughs> when did that actually begin? Right at the beginning. I mean, we met through coaching because I was coaching. He was the athlete at the box that I started working at. And so that was 2015, 2015. We did not get along. We still don't get along when it comes to coaching and approaches. Well, well, don't get along. <laughs> no. Not that much. So it's, uh, it requires a lot of communication. Yeah. Talk to me about it. I've been, you know, uh, coach, I've coached many people. I've, I've also been you know, in relationships with many people. And one of the things I often talk about is, you know, who you should and who you should not coach. So what was this like? 2015, you guys meet joking around that, yeah, you didn't like each other then, but but what's kind of, talk us through for the people that don't know, myself included, the entire story, you know, how I met your mother type of. Uh... <laughs> that would be a very long story. Uh, do you want to go? Or do you want me to go? You go. Oh, I go. Um, I think it it, it just kind of happened um, when we started dating and like just moving boxes and things like that to transition. Like we were training together. I had more coaching experience. Obviously, he ended up coaching years later, but um, it was just kind of as we went along, like just doing CrossFit. And obviously, like I saw potential in him. And he was getting more interested in, oh, maybe I could try to make it to regionals or maybe I could try making it to the games. And at that point I was like, well, do we want to do this together? Do you want me to be your coach? Do you want me to program for you? And it was kind of like, yeah, let's try it. Let's test it out for a year and see like how much improvement can we get? Like what can we accomplish together? And so every year as we you know kept going along, like we were getting good enough results, but it, it's like even this year after the games, like, well, are we going to continue doing this? Like, is there somebody that is better suited for you? Do you want to try something else? Like for me as a coach, I don't take that position for granted. Um, and, and so that's a discussion that we we have and we've evolved. And as a coach, like I like I go look at what other people are doing. Like I'm looking at Comtrain, I'm looking at Proven, I'm looking at Mayhem, like I'm looking at the dot com, like I'm looking at all these things to integrate into his programming um gymnastics conjugate like all these things so i try to be as well versed to be able to help him achieve his goal um but it's it's something that like it's not necessarily permanent but i find the coaching's cool caroline i'm far more fascinated by the relationship yeah. so so, so i, I want to well first of all you said something interesting like making sure you're the best one i mean jeff how hard of a conversation would that? It'd be hard enough to leave any coach, let alone. Uh, yeah, there's. Um, I mean, unless I would, ha I would, I would not be performing at all. <laughs> like then, I would start thinking about it. But I'm still, I still want us to make it on our own in some way. Like we've built this, we've done this, and nobody, I, nobody can take credit except for her and me and that's what i want to keep doing that's that's important for me like i'm not gonna say i'm a mayhem athlete no i'm we are going to the games her she programmed for me now relationship wise like it's a three-part relationship we have the business side the the 
First couple, couple personal relationship, and then we have coach athlete relationship. In no, in no particular order, Jeff. I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll it's, it, it's three. It's it's it, yeah. that's our life. It's three compartments, and we have to be able to keep them separated as much as we can. And I think we're doing a pretty good job at it. Like coach athlete will always have. Like differences of opinion. Yeah, I'm an athlete. I'm gonna I'm gonna complain all the time and she's gonna make me do stuff I don't wanna do, but I'll do it anyway. I'll just complain the whole the whole time. Um but once once the coach athlete is done, like once we're out of the gym, it's it's uh it's me and Carol, it's personal, that's different. And then when business wise, like I've I've been lately I've been going like sliding away from the gym and trying to just do the athlete portion and not the business portion. So she's a, she's more, she puts more time in the business than I do. So that just separated itself a little bit in the last like year and a half. I think, I think it's just like our ability to be able to like compartmentalize things. Like when he's, if we're talking about programming and coaching and the season or like whatever, then we're talking about that. And I don't take anything personal um, when it comes to like our relationship. So once we're that, once that discussion is done, like it's done and then we move on and we, you know, we go have fun and we go on with our day. And so maybe that like our ability to be able to go back and forth and keep it kind of separate is what makes it work possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about communication. So, so talk me through it. 2015, you meet at the box. Yeah. Which box were you at at the time? CrossFit Saint Tobias, Saint so Hubert, on the south shore of Montreal. South. Okay, so not far from uh, the states then. No. From New York. Yeah. And and you were coaching there, but Jeff, you were just working out. Yeah. And then, who makes the first move? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I there was no move there was no move it just yeah, there was no move happened so we did not get along just because like he is strong-headed and i'm strong-headed and i want to do things my way and he was like oh, i can just like stroll in the class and like do whatever i want i was like no no no, this is not gonna work so like at first we were just like butting heads and he was just avoiding my classes <laughs> but i was making headway with all the other athletes so eventually like the people he was hanging out with they're like hey well like we want to do the classes we want to do this and that and so it was just one day um it was i think like an 11 a.m class it was like really really quiet and he came and they could have done open gym but his friend wanted to train and do the class so they did that and then we stayed and i helped him with something my caps no so, before that oh that was before before i think like muscle ups or something and then he was like it's so funny because like, he's really good at double unders now but he did not have double unders when we met and uh, so we practiced that and then he was just like his calves were so stiff um and so we spent time on that like i was showing him like mobilization and like i massaged him and stuff and we just started talking and like the the tension of just like oh like we keep butting heads just kind of came down and we got to talk but like, I guess that was the move, but neither of us was like trying to make a move. And I was coaching the next class. So he left and he came back and he brought me a coffee. Ooh, good and I was good. like, oh, that's so sweet of him. Like, I didn't expect like anything in return. It was just like, for me, it was just natural. And I guess for him, it was just natural. Big and it move. was, yeah, that was the big move he bought me. He was like, oh, you prefer Tim Hortons or McDonald's? I was like, Tim Hortons, yeah, I was gonna say Tim Hortons. <laughs> I do not do well on Tim Hortons. Um, and so I, I, I finished the, the classes and stuff. And then I was like, I didn't befriend him or anything. So I was like, oh, I want to say thank you. And I was like, oh, I'll go on Facebook and could not find him for the whole weekend with all my, you know, Facebook and Instagram skills and all that. And then on the Monday, I think we saw each other again. And I yeah. said, thank you. And that kind of like loosened it up and it was better. And then I got fired like 48 hours after. <laughs> you got the gym? Yeah. Because of this relationship? No, 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 no. For like a completely different matter. Gotcha. It, well, I mean, I got fired. I was like, is this, like I had a conversation with the boss. I was three months in and I was applying rules that apparently I was supposed to apply, which some people didn't like. And so that made its way up to the uh, the owner. And then we were having the discussion and I, she was like, oh, I was like, well, this doesn't look like it's going to work. So do you want me to continue? And she was like, oh, I was like, well, maybe I should leave. <laughs> 
And that just like kind of stunned her. And I was like, well, you tell me to, you know, draw a circle. I'm drawing a circle. And then you're telling me I'm, I'm not, you don't want me to draw a circle. Like what do you want? I was just like, at that point, I was just like, I was like, I'm not going to do this for like six months to a year or whatever. I was three months in. I was like, no, 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 this is not going to I like that analogy. So did you, when you leave that box, did Jeff, did you follow her? Not right away. Not right away, but it didn't take much time. So we went out once. And a then uh, a date, a date. A date? Yes. A date. I was from the South shore and she was, was on in the, the city. Um, so I had to cross bridges like to go see her. So I like sometimes like it's a huge endeavor. He got in the car and drove yeah, but, like 10 uh, minutes. <laughs> it's, uh, I was, I was working construction back then and there were bridges, raining. Caroline, there were bridges. In there bridges. bridges. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> uh, when it, when it would rain, I would not work. So as soon as it would rain, I would go downtown spend some time train whatever so it started like that and then slowly evolved well slowly quickly 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 so you guys been together like six years yeah, yeah. Are you guys aren't engaged are you no yeah oh sorry jeff my bad yeah you opened them <laughs> i tried not to i try to be the guy that doesn't put the pressure because when i was single like everybody's like and then you get married like kids and I try to be honest with people like kids are okay. They're not all they're cracked up. You know, everybody tells you to do it. I'm like, ah. How's your okay. How old is that? Madison just turned six months. Okay. She's enjoyable now. For the first six months, she's not. So now I like her. <laughs> I was at the games for like 10 days and came back and I was like, okay, this baby's fun again. So <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. What's been... I don't want to open up anything bad. So feel free to be like, let's not chat about it. What was, what's been the worst argument you two have had about coaching, but more so because you're a couple, like it's, a, it's, it's gotta be hard. I've owned businesses with my wife. I've trained my wife. And it's like, you can't, if I'm like, Hey, Hey babe, push your knees out. Why are you telling me to push your, my knees out? Right? Like, because it's your wife where another coach, she'd be like, Oh, that was the best cue ever. Right. So so what uh, that's I, it, the most frustrating thing for me because like I do my research like you know I go get all the information and all that and I'll tell him things for days and weeks and months and years until somebody else says the exact same thing and then all of a sudden he does it <laughs> and I'm like well if that's what got you to do it like great like for the first two years he would not hook grip because it hurt and I was like but you need to learn it now so that you build you know, your hook grip and you'll be fine when it gets heavier. But then one time we went to cross an NCR and trained with Paul and Matt Zbarek and all that. And Paul was like, man, you're not hook gripping? Yeah, the next day he was hook gripping. I was like, <laughs> I've only been telling him that for two years. Like now I look like the bad coach, like, oh, like I haven't been doing my job. I'm like, no, I do this all the time. So that keeps happening. But other than that, it's, uh, I don't think we have arguments. Like I understand the pressure that he's under, especially like because of the level that we're aiming for. Like he wants to progress. He wants to see, um, you know, improvement in PRs and, and know that he's improving. And, you know, there's a calendar that we need to respect. We need to be able to perform in the open. We need to be able to perform at road. We need to be able to, so I understand like for him, like the time constraint, them seeing those improvements. And sometimes like, doing things well requires more time. So it's more that of like, I don't want to cut corners. I need to make sure that I'm doing the best to get him where he needs to in the amount of time that we have, but he wants kind of everything. I think we're actually, we're actually right now in, in our worst yeah. uh, time of the year. Post games is, the, is the, the, the season that I dislike the most. Why is that? Because I take rest. And then once and you come back, hurts. you feel like <laughs> shit and everything hurts. And I'm like, why? Like two weeks ago, I was fine. And now everything hurts for no reason. And I was resting, like I haven't been working out. And then I start again and it's hard. And then the next competition is coming. I'm not feeling my best right now. I want to feel my best right now. Like it's, it's, and it, it just has, it takes a little bit more time than like one day of training to, to come back to it. So, yeah. Are you still in full rest mode? We had Velner on maybe a week ago and he said he's taking about a month off. Are you in full rest mode? 
So we took the last two weeks. I did some workouts. Like group classes. Group classes like... just to have fun. If I felt like moving, I did something. If I didn't, I didn't. Um, so not fully, fully off, but mm, like mo mostly off, uh, off. And today we're starting to, we're, I'm not going to work out super hard. Like we spent two hours this morning just doing rehab stuff. But we're gonna start from today, like implementing a schedule, start like ramping it back up slowly, doing more like engine work, um, rehab stuff, yeah. getting the shoulders, the hips, the knees, elbows, like back to. It's also just like getting back into the routine. Yeah. Right. What time are we going to bed? What time are we waking up? What time are we eating? How much are we eating? Like, the I don't know. Do you want to tell people when is this going to be published? Uh, are you about to? Break some news on here, Caroline. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, probably by the end of the week. Okay, so we're planning on staying here until Rogue in Florida. Oh, you're in Florida right now? Yeah, we're yeah. in Florida right now. All right, I thought so, you were about to drop like. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like we're gonna announce it through like our coaches know and things like that, but the gym doesn't know. We're gonna tell them because oh, you're not near the box, is what you're implying. Yeah. So um, getting used to the heat, like adjusting your hydration to the heat, like all these things that, you know, staying here is also kind of implying and, and it's not just about training at, the, at his level, it's about all the other things that we need to kind of put in place. So we need, like, that's what we're focusing on this week because if we were back home, it would be completely different. We could just kind of fall back into our routine and so we could probably push it back a little bit more, but. Where, where are you in Florida? Sanford. Orlando. Oh, Sanford. Okay. What what made you go there specifically? My, my parents. My parents have a house here. But you're Canadian, right, Jeff? Yeah. yeah. Oh, but they just have a house in the States there? Yeah. Well, His my dad, dad works here. Yeah. Cool. At Disney World? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what box are you trading out of? Uh, Exalted. Cool. All right. Cool. Yeah, that, that's awesome that you're... So, and then you'll be at Rogue in October. Fern and I will be at Rogue as well. So hopefully we can uh, yeah. catch up there. Well, on a one to 10, Jeff, how sore are you after the games week? This year's? Let's, let's go, would you say one? One. Like not sore at all? That's, in, that's you know, I think for, for like the average person, like, you know, I've been doing CrossFit a long time you see that amount of volume, 15 workouts, and you're like, but then you take into account, like Velner said, like two or three are skill-based, like you're not gonna get sore from the handstand walk. Even the swimming and kayaking, I doubt. So sore, right? That that was the one of the two workouts that made me the most sore. Really? What the kayak? Yeah. Right here. Some the For, gripping. Forms. So gotcha. forearms were sore, and uh, the second workout that made me sore was, and everybody, no competitor this year, no walk, and walk. Nobody can tell you they weren't sore from the quads after the thrusters. No. Yeah, the wall walk, the wall walk work. Oh yeah, the wall walk thrusters, but not the wall walks, the thrusters, the speed That's and the weight and the reps made my quads really, really sore. But by the end of the weekend, it was gone. Weekend. I mean, that's four days, five days later, because that was a Wednesday workout, right? And you had well, I wasn't sore from my quads Saturday. Saturday, I, I, that's surprising. I mean, obviously, maybe because I can't do 185 pound thrusters, I can't understand. But I've done wall walks, and I get like lit up in my lats and my oblique. So I'm surprised, you know, going off of the overheads into the th into the wall walks, so that you were more sore there. Tell me, tell me this. This was one of the most surprising moments as a judge that just I didn't anticipate the the amount of sweat you guys would be dealing with on those wall walks. That was uh, I I was actually happy to be in the first heat for that workout because when we got out, one of the competitors told me like, "Oh, these guys are going to do wall walks in our puddles of sweat." I was like, "Oh yeah. God, yes." So for sure, like the second heat, it, it must have been slippery. And the thing is like the, where we did the wall walks, a part of where we walked was rubber mat. 
but right. then where the lines were like at the end but just before we got on our bellies the 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 material would change like it would be like the sticker the, the white sticker and sweat on that was so so slippery so one once we would get like close to finishing the wall walks it was like praying to god that my hand wouldn't slip because if you slip then it's a no rep and i was yeah. like i don't want to have a no rep because i slipped that would be stupid so i was like oh, oh. And then the judge would tell me, like, be careful, you're going quick at the bottom. I, I, I know, but I don't <laughs> want to slip. Like, um, but that, yeah, that was uh, actually an okay workout. I did, I did not dislike this workout. It was hard, um, but it, it was fun. Was yeah, like, that was actually, it, it's, it's a special workout for me because that's my first Coliseum event. Really? You competed... Yeah. Well I, well, I want to say I had Cole Sager in the first heat and it was like he was in a pool. I was like, I've never seen someone sweat like this. Yeah. I feel like the Coliseum was hot this year. It's very humid. Like, I feel like usually there's more air conditioning. Could be. I, I'm. It was hard to say because we, we had to wear masks the whole time. So it was like, it was just uncomfortable. But yeah, he was like getting to the end and almost like diving and just, I was like, this has got to hurt every time. You, you competed... 19. 19. You went to the Coliseum? He got cut before. Oh, because they did the early cuts that they didn't even have one event in the Coliseum before the cut. It was Mary, the first event in the yeah. Coliseum, and he got cut. I, I was two points away of having the opportunity to do Mary in the Coliseum. Because, oh, that's right. They had the, that was the year with all the countries. Yeah. yeah. So they had those drastic cuts. What's your, what's your opinions on those cuts? I know Castro got a lot of heat this year, even. Or dropping to what do you the, go 30 the, to 20. The real issue, I, I don't mind the cuts. It sucks. As an athlete, telling me that you're gonna cut me is why. Like just start the games at 30. It's fine. Just qualify only 30. If you're if you're gonna do cuts anyway, why get those 10 to 20 people and just not enjoy the full weekend? And we all know that if the all the men would have done all of the events. The leaderboard would have been different. We know that. Um, so if you're if you're gonna do cuts, one tell us like not five minutes before the competition. Tell us months ahead. Like this is how it's gonna work. So that when you register for the games, you know, like there's a possibility you're gonna get cut there after this many events, and there's another cut there after this many events, and you get ready mentally for it. Now we were like, I think that's oh, the cool. point is Castro doesn't want people to yeah. get mentally ready. I think the timing this year, like, because there's still a lot of like internationally with COVID and regulations, like people were putting a lot of money and time and investment into this to be comfortable with your decision because people obviously took the decision to come to the United States and do all these things, thinking that they were going to do all of the games. And now you don't do that. Would that have changed your decision? Potentially yes, potentially no, but you're taking that opportunity away from people. And like just the Aussies, like we know everything that they're going through, going back to Australia. Nobody could have foreseen that this that the country was going to be shut down and that they wouldn't be able to get on a plane or that they knew they were going to have to quarantine. So they were fine with that decision coming to the States. But now airlines are being affected, like going back home, the cost, this and that. I think that for this year, like if you want to have that mental aspect to the games, that it's an unknown every year, I respect that. Tell people, like I was talking to Michelle Letan and she's like, well, there was cuts back in 2012 or whichever the year. And I was like, well, Michelle, I wasn't there in 2012. And as good and informed as I can be and want to be, I didn't know. So that's fine. Now I'll be prepared and I'll prepare him psychologically, but the sport is evolving and not everybody was there at the beginning. And so to presume that like, oh, well, this is normal or this has happened before, like. But the thing is like, it, it did happen. Let's say it happened in 2012 and 2013. Well, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, no cuts. And then cuts are back. Why? Like, cause you don't, I, I, I understand like the, that sometimes the bottom 10 can, it feels like they're miles away and you want to cut that down a little bit. But then why qualify 40, qualify less? Yeah. That's my that's my opinion. And then don't do cuts, but have a full field for the full weekend. 
and have like the spread point the same for the whole weekend because that changed as well with the cuts and then you get five points difference for every spot at the end and now we finish the games with a huge gap between the guys and there's no racing going on so that's i don't know i i'm not against cut but i for sure don't like them they're very stressful and as soon as the cuts were done i started to perform better and i wish i wish i could and that's maybe my own that's you that's my own problem like i have to deal with that and be able to stress less at the start of the competition but yeah i mean i'm, I'm just think- happy and lucky i guess that i did the top 20 this year and did the whole weekend well i think it's also interesting because you're coming into it with the perspective of i'm i've got a chance to win this and i think not everybody comes in with that mindset so they're like almost like it's like when someone's at a in the middle of a workout and i'm like hey i'm gonna drop you down 10 pounds and they're like thank you like i wouldn't have done that but i appreciate you protecting me like some of those people are just like thank god i'm out like i had no chance of winning we're like you're coming in and I would say 10 to 15 people actually truly have a chance, right? Yeah. Like a lot of those, like everyone's a phenomenal athlete. I'm not taking anything away from anyone, but yeah. some of those people aren't even, there's a huge difference in other words. Yeah. Like like we hear, like there's levels to this thing. And obviously you being in the top five the year before yeah. showed you like, hey, I got a real shot, especially, you know, with, with Frazier retiring. To, let's Let's chat about that for a moment. For both of you, I assume you were in the bubble, Caroline, last yeah. year. So what? how was it different for both of you at the ranch in 2020 versus Madison in 2021? Uh, on the athlete side, I prefer I preferred 2020 so <laughs> much more than, than 2021. Just it's super special as it it super special. But it was um, it was more intimate. It was more intimate, less crammed, like it, it didn't feel as much as hurting cows, hurting cows and like trying to run a show and everything was like super, you, you have to get ready. Some of the heats, the first guy, the first heats of the guys had like five minutes to warm up. I'm like, That's how, crazy. how can you this year? In this year. year. <laughs> when, when last year we always had time, we had time. We were able to come from one venue to the other, have time to warm up, have time to eat. Um, it was just more chilled. An, a more chilled environment than this year. Um, so it's, it's, it can't be compared at all uh, both years. I do prefer, I did prefer 2020 than 2021, um, but it's still fun to have the crowd. It's, it's, uh, it's fun to be in the Coliseum and to have like the, the show aspect of the games that we didn't have last year. Um, so yeah, that's that's my point of view. Like more, a little bit more time, less like rushed. Everything felt rushed this year. Like it was, you have 15 minutes here. We're gonna walk you all the way to the end of the North Park. You're gonna have 15 minutes there, and then we're gonna herd you into the the, the field. Oh, yes. And then from the field, we go for a briefing on the uh, in the um, uh, Coliseum. No, sometimes oh, we we'll go to the Coliseum or the athlete area, and it's like a 10, 15 minute walk every time. So it takes time off of warming up, getting ready, eating food, drinking water. It's like always like commuting somewhere and ha- either being briefed or you have five minutes to warm up. So that's what I, I did. I liked less than last year. Yeah, I mean, for example, the hands, the freestanding handstand workout. I mean, I remember watching the brief and I'm looking at my clock and I was like, yeah, I got to be out there, let alone you guys, right? The, yeah. the first heat of men had literally, they had, I think they had seven minutes to warm up for three handstand push ups and 405 405 pound deadlifts. I'm like, I'm so glad I'm not in the first heat, but like, that's, that's just not fair. At this point, it's just not fair. It, yeah, it does create a disparity with how much preparedness and how much readiness you can right. have, like with your athlete, with warming up, with all these things. Or like, if you want everybody to be ready on the, you know, drop of a hat, then that's everybody, not the first heat. Cause that's like what kept happening over the weekend is the first heat, first heat kind of gets like the rug pulled under its feet. Cause it's like, okay, well, we're doing the briefing, we're doing this. And then like, you, they have to go. And then the other heats can kind of like prep and warm up. That, that, was, not, that was not the free handstand push up. It was the, the handstand, handstand walk, walk event with the parallels. That's the one that guys they had. literally had three minutes. Uh, they got yeah. up and were like, 
because that First was uh, that was 30 men at that point yeah right so and that was something Vellner mentioned he's like one of his goals early on in the competition is to get into those later heats not just to give you that time to prepare but also to watch yeah, yeah. the earlier heats to kind of see what's uh, I forget which workout he mentioned but it might have been the the final workout but he's like you see kind of where people struggle and and, and where you can take advantage. How how sore were you after at Atlanta? Do you remember? Um, I, I'm I fascinated, was, by the way, by soreness of games athletes. <laughs> so, I, did, I did 100 pull-ups like three days ago in my garage and I can, can't extend my arms. So I'm always yeah. like, how you guys do this is mind blowing. I wasn't as sore as I thought I would be when they announced no. the workout. I. I like I was bicep sore from from that workout for for a day or two for sure, but um, the rest of the workout was so slow that like Atlanta is basically three hundred pull ups. Like it's such it's such a huge amount of pull ups to do with the vest that the the rest is like buy ins and buy outs. Like um that's right. that's how it felt for me like the run was super slow the handstand push-ups were breaking up like in sets of six and then the pistols were like just chill on the pistols until you're done 200 but then the big chunk was the pull-ups so i wasn't that sore after that uh that it, not as sore as people might think what what wrecked like the whole like the whole weekend was such big workouts like and every day there was at least one that would wreck us. So like the first day we did the total, which will wreck your back. There's like, if you max out your deadlift, your back will be sore. That's hundred percent guarantee. And then we did the loop. The loop was such a horrible event. So good. And not as much as, as the soreness that it brought, but the fatigue that it brought, like I was so tired that you can't eat, you can't sleep, you're not comfortable sitting, lying down, standing, like there's, you're just not comfortable. It took like three hours to come back from that event. He was like, lying on the bed, just, I was like, just lying, oh, I was like, like not, not feeling comfortable in his own skin, like do something, don't touch me, like, oh, what's going on? Like, so that, that was hard was and then funny. everybody was wrecked the next day and then we would have like, what was the next day, uh, the next day's mm -hmm. event? I don't remember. Uh, the hands? Then the handstand was the, was the third day. Toast to bar, remember. second day. The toast to bar, the snatch, the bike, and the, the biker Peter. The rope happy climbs, star. the happy star. So like it, the, the events were tiring, um. But yeah, definitely, com like which one, for me personally, which one was the hardest? It, 2020 was harder than 2021. As far as the the work and the recovery. Yeah. I think volume wise, even though there were more events, there was less volume. There's less, like they did 90 toast to bar. Like yeah. they can handle 90. They did we 180 did. GHDs like to qualify. And then yeah. they got to do 90 yeah. toast to bar at the game. So it's, it wasn't. We didn't as... do like, my hands were fine. Like we did what? We did uh, 90, 90 pull ups, 90, pull -ups 90 toast to bar, and then 48 muscle ups. That's it in five days like i can do that in one day of training so who, who who is better at looking at a workout for you jeff and assessing like where you're going to be strong weak and planning which one of you like are you better at it or is caroline better because she's kind of like outside of the bubble uh it's I different it's di so i know if it's a chipper i have no clue whatsoever of what's going to be my time for some reason a chipper i can never get like i'm going to say oh this is going to take me 20 minutes and then it takes me 12 or i think it's going to take me 12 and it takes me 25. yeah he's super like, weird at like analyzing time sometimes but i'm like for other workouts i can tell you like mm, this is going to be a 12 to 13 minute workout for me and then she can tell me like mm, this should be 11 minutes and like oh and she's right like for the the competitive time she's able to have like this is going to be like a top time or a very very good time but i'm good at saying like i can do this in this amount of time but at like at like 90 percent like a good effort for him because like he's at that level but he's he's weirdly inconsistent about like acknowledging his own level i'm like no like this like this is going to be a good time you're going to do it in four and he's like that's going to take six minutes and then he doesn't like 4 15 i'm like 
yes, because you're that good. And he's like, but really? And I'm like, you've only been to the games three times. Like, it's just like, he's weird like that. I'm like, no, you can do, you can do this amount, like unbroken. Oh, it's going to be too hard. Like, I can't do that. I'm like, yes, you can. And then he does it. And he's like, oh. So there's been to, a little bit of lag there in the last year. You just have to remind him. Like, it's, is it yeah. hard for you, Jeff? Like being, I mean, three years going to the games, our, our mutual friend Pete Shaw said uh, he remembers you at regionals in 2018. So is it is it still strange for you to consider yourself one of the best in the world? It is a little bit. And um I, I, the, the, the path that I have is weird. Cause like this year felt my, like my first again, like I'm not a rookie anymore at all. This is my third year. And I still feel like a rookie because every time I've been to the games, it's been different. So I've done 2019, a uh, million competitors, many, many cuts. And then I've done only five, uh, in aromas. And then I've done 40 with cuts uh this year uh so it, and every time was like a well the first year i did i didn't do the coliseum so this year felt like a different venue again like and that's that's a weird feeling to have is like to to keep reminding myself like i'm not a rookie but i do feel like it and yeah. it's just weird to understand and i think the day that i'll be able to say like no this is this is what i do this is how good i am and then something will unlock I guess, but it's yeah, you are in a very unique situation where you're really the only person that has that experience in three different games. Yeah. Yeah. The closest one, the two closest Noah one uh, and Fraser. Yeah. But, but Noah, they did the whole weekend, but they've done other years. That yeah. Were normal. Yeah. Right. So Med Justin Medeiros is uh, wasn't there in 2019. He wasn't there in 2019, but he still did 20 and 21. And then Maleros Guillermo, he did yeah. 2019 and then 2021. So they, the, these guys know, like they have that um, exposure, that exposure a little bit. But I've done the three years. I'm, I'm, I think I'm the only one that did the three years. Oh, uh, just yeah. three years. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like such unique, just this three such years. Yes, different years. What can you? walk us through a day in the life at the games for an athlete and coach combination um what day do you want a day that i feel like shit or a day that because <laughs> those are really different well what would cause one of the is it is it primarily just how bad the previous day of training was or is it this year i think the water of the lake every year every year and, people get uh, sick from the water and I ate something that just did not want to go through. Uh, you ate outside, not not like you drank water from the lake like that. But I for sure drank water from the lake. That's a hundred percent sure. I'm just not aware of it. Like while you're swimming, you're gonna drink some water. And many many competitors <laughs> this year were feeling sick after the 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 swim. Um, but yeah, I had like the combination. I'm guessing I had a little bit from the the lake, and then I exactly. ate something that ju I just didn't digest at all so it affected my recovery pretty badly so the second day like the day the friday after the rest day um like i couldn't eat i slept hor like my my recovery was so low no energy not able to like start the machine like it didn't want to start um so that was hard so that friday like waking up i had a half bagel and that's it that's it and then i had to do the, the event five was uh, the rope climbs the ski and the sandbag which is an event i was supposed to do pretty well at because i'm pretty good at rope climbs and i finished 32nd on 34 competitors so that that was super hard but it's it's that's what's uh that's what's a day of com com competing is is like you eat you work out and then you try to recover, eat, you work out, and you, you do that times how many events you have in the day. So the more events there are, the harder it is to do it. Friday is the best example. Like you wake up, you eat, you go to the venue, warm up, get briefed, do the first event, and then 
you try to cool down, you try to eat a little bit, and then you do the second event. You cool down, you eat a little bit, you do a third event. But there's you try to eat. They don't that, feel like eating. So that I'm day trying there's to force feed them and just be like, here's some water, here's some supplements, here's some food. Like get something in your body because if you've if you've ever like even like local competitions, if you've done competitions like you're kind of revved up and you're not going to be hungry. Like your body's not going to trigger that necessarily. And so in order to stay fueled, you need to eat, but that's, you know, eating chicken and rice isn't the best oh, when you're God. like, oh, I'm not hungry. It's so like, hard. Mm, delicious. And that's you- something that I saw this year. Like I've, I've, uh, I was, I was looking at what the other guys were eating. Cause I was like, I'm, I want, I want to eat. So, cause I know if I eat, I'll perform, but it's just so hard to eat. And the, the, the podium people eat all day. They just are able to force feed themselves or I don't know, they feel good enough that they can eat a little bit. They're not eating a ton, but you see them, they finish a workout, they grab some food and they just chug some food and I'm like, Phew, that's, a, that's a special skill. <laughs> that's a special skill, but that's what, that's what gives them the energy to perform. Are, are you a little more flexible in what you allow yourself to eat, knowing you need the calories? Like, will you crush donuts, cookies, cake? I'll, I'll eat whatever goes in. So if it's a cookie, then I'll just have it because it's better that than nothing. Um, if Usually I feel like um, I, I like to eat burgers in, in like in a comp- at the end of a competition day. And this, yeah, this year I didn't have that, that, uh, that craving. Um, but yeah, I, I chose to eat some Chipotle and it did not go well for me. Did not that, go well at all. That's that just was a horrible Chipotle. mistake. What? That's just standard Chipotle. It's worth it. But, uh, you know, don't do it during competition. No, what was, your, that what was your Sunday night dinner for the two of you? <sighs> it was the Aki dinner. Uh, no, Saturday. No, you said Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, like at the end of competition. Oh, did you guys show up at the hotel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we went, uh, we ate, we ate. Uh, Whatever they were serving, it was yeah. delicious. We just that was kind of like Chipotle, over. actually. It was kind of like Chipotle. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but hopefully it didn't make you sick. Do you, no. Will you have like alcohol after competing on a Sunday? Uh, yeah, I had a little alcohol. bit, not much, like a beer, maybe a beer and a half. <laughs> Like I'm just so entrenched in thinking about like recovery, but you're saying like, it's like, yeah, I'm not too beat up and you don't have to worry about anything on Monday. No, no that's, that's why like, that's the perfect moment to have some alcohol. Cause that's when, that's one thing that affects recovery a lot. So it's like, I don't need to be recovered tomorrow. So I'll just use this as a, 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 a this is the, the perfect timing to have some, if you're craving some, uh, this year, I didn't have that big of a craving for, for alcohol. We had a few drinks here afterwards. Like the, the week the week or two after the games, like if, if there's an occasion where I can have some, I'll have some. Even throughout the year, like sometimes I just want a good cold beer on a hot summer day. I'll have it. I just know that the next day, like don't expect to PR anything. Like you might feel horrible and that's fine. Like it's a decision that I'm willing to take. We had it after semifinals. Yeah. It's not, we're not big drinkers anyway, so it's not like, oh, we feel like we need to catch up or we've been depriving ourselves. Like it's not a huge craving. And if we do, if we do feel like it, then we'll try to match it to an occasion. So like, oh, like especially around semifinals, like the summer's coming, it's getting hotter. So it's like, well, let's do it. Like, let's do it as a celebration. We're not just gonna do it for nothing type of thing because we still calculated a little bit. But it's not uh it's not a huge like alcohol isn't a huge issue for now. So last thing that I wanted to chat about, you guys, obviously, Canada dealt with quite a bit during the pandemic. You know, we, as not just as a box owner, right? You guys are just opening back up or maybe like a month ago. uh, June 11th. So there's, so each province is in charge of like COVID regulations. So I I guess it kind of works like that here in the States too, but um, so Quebec dealt with it one way, Ontario dealt with it another way, you know, where Vellner is in British Columbia, they dealt with it another way. So there is varying discrepancies um, in how they applied some of the regulations. Uh, the cases were different, right, from province to province. Um, so things like that. So we shut down March 
17, like March 15, right when Atlas was supposed to happen. And then we reopen June something in 2020. And then we were open all the way almost until like stage one. I think we were open. Yes. Stage one, we were open. So mid September. And then we shut down like right as we were leaving for stage two. So October, we shut back down again. So October 15th, we shut back down. Um, and then we reopened around like the last week of the open, we reopened, but for like a week, because then they got scared again. And then we got, we weren't able to train indoors, but we could train outdoors, but it's like March and April in Canada is like not the best weather, but we made it work when we could. And then we fully reopened June. early June. And now things are like somewhat normal. There's still restrictions in terms of like how many people you can have in the building and like social distancing and things like that. Um, but now we are like, it feels normal. Like it's been feeling normal since June at our gym. Obviously you guys have chosen to stay in the States, but was there a period of time where you worried you wouldn't make it to the game? Uh, no, actually coming to the U S well, as Canadian, yeah. it's very easy. Okay. You say cross the games, they're happy to see you. And then there you go. Like we literally did not, they did not ask any questions at all. They're Maybe like, just lucky. welcome, go have fun. Um, so it, it's never been hard to come to the U.S. No. Nerve wracking. Cause like, you never know, like it's still a person in front of you asking you questions and like, they could say yes, they could say no. So like, there's always a little bit of nervousness when, you know, for me, when I cross the border, but it's never like, are we going to get in? Like, no, you're going to, you're going to get I'm, in, but I'm, we have all the papers, yeah, we have we were, all the justifications. Like we it's ready. not, it shouldn't, it shouldn't we, be a, an issue. We had like vaccine proof. We had our negative tests. We had a letter from CrossFit. Like if, if we had any questions, like we were ready to, um, like answer, answer and hopefully get in, but it was just very easy. Right now, I'm more like, and that's a reason why we're staying in, in the U.S. is I'm a little bit scared that for some reason, like the borders shut down again. So let's say I would leave the U.S. right now and I want to do Rogue in October. Who says in October I'll be able to come? Yeah. So that's that's no what's uh, stressing me out. Right, I feel like this time around, like in the next few months, that, that would uh, be like more a, a stress factor than like just staying in the US would be, it's just so much simpler this way. Yeah. What percentage would you say of the athletes were vaccinated? I don't know. Um, so um, the international athletes were all vaccinated. They had to be. You had to, unless you wanted to quarantine, them, except yeah. the, the Australians, which had to quarantine anyway. Uh, but I'm guessing like 90% of international athletes had double shots just to like not have the, like we got our double shots because if you got doubles, then you don't have to quarantine because coming into the U.S., CDC re requires a seven day quarantine. I recommend. And then going back to Canada, it's 14 day quarantine. So if, and if you're double vaccinated, you can skip those. So um that that was uh, why we we were like I have to get this double shot right now. Before but that also leave. affected his training and his recovery, yeah. and like that was one of the things. Like we got our first shot right before semis. We got our second shot right before leaving. Like we yeah. made it so that because you have to have it for fourteen days. So we you know just, just moving the dates and getting vaccinated. But that affected a lot of the training and the recovery. Um, and then we think up to the back, Joe. Were you were you feeling? The the yeah. second shot like cost me at least four four good days of training. Wow. Yeah, very and, tired. And more. Very tired. The first day was like some symptoms. It's not fun. Not fun at all. Like uh, I would I would like I would have liked having the, the second shot like a few months ago, but it wasn't possible in Canada. So we made it happen anyway, yeah. and I'm happy I did get those. But it did cost me a little bit of training. Uh, but like it was, it was quite easy to know who wasn't vaccinated because the the athletes that weren't had to test before. So we would see the athlete go test, and I'm like, oh well, you're, you, not you're not vaccinated, or you had one shot but not the second one, which is better than nothing. But you still had to get tested, and that's why like some of the athletes tested positive for COVID. If you would have had shots, 
you would never test it. And then even you, if you had you, COVID, you could have done the games, even if you have COVID. So that's, uh, I was happy that like we had both our shots, like you're sure that you, you're not kicked out. Cause if you tested positive, you, like you're out, it's done. There's no questions asked. It's like, as soon as you're positive, it you, like it's, it must've been super hard. So oh, and, yeah. like Carrie Pierce and yeah, and Bethany, Bethany Cadburn, which are athletes that would have done great this damage, year, like, but just because they tested positive and not there. And it doesn't mean, I don't know if they got some symptoms, but if they, cause you can have, you can test positive and feel great. Like that's, yeah. that's the weird thing about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just like getting both vaccines was just a big stress taken off of our shoulders. You don't have to test, you don't have to quarantine. You can just do your things semi normally. Um, so yeah. And like, we're still being careful. We're still being, and I mean, you can still catch it. We're protected more than if we, well, I guess we're protected more than if you have no shots. So it's a, uh, it's a stressful. Totally get it. Yeah. I mean, even for us as judges, we were dealing with the same situations. Yeah. So outside of the rogue invitational uh, at the end of October, what's next for you this year? Um, I want to go back to Dubai. Um, why, why that one in particular? I've, I've done two in a row. Uh, I, I wanted to go the third time, but got canceled. Um, it's just a cool, it's, it's a cool competition. Dubai is, is it's, it's just fun to go there. The cash prizes are awesome. Like they're like, I'm not gonna like the, 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 it affects that, the decision. Yeah. The, the athletes that go there, it's like, you, you want to make a little bit of money ideally. So it's a good place to, to do it. And uh, I don't know. It's just, a, it's just a, there's something cool around it. I wish I, I plan, I was planning actually to maybe do the mayhem one in the Emirates, but it's just too close to rogue. To rogue. And cause I, I rogue was actually a surprise for me to get the invitation. I really didn't think I would get invited. And I was like, I'm not doing a qualifier for this. So when I got the, the invite, I was like, oh, well, this changes the plans a little bit. Um, I'm happy. Why were, you, why were you surprised to get invited? Because I finished outside the top 10 at the games. And the last time they invited the top 10 at the games. And more. Um, but that's the thing. Yeah. Like the rules keep kind of changing and evolving right now. So when they did it from 2019 to 2020, the top 10 was guaranteed from the games. And then they invited other people like Vellner got invited. He wasn't yeah, in the top 10. I'm not Vellner. <laughs> Hi Patrick. Um, so this year, like, well, if, if we follow the same pattern, they'll invite the top 10 and then the rest are like, maybe they'll have a few people that they're going to want to invite or whatever. And like, we didn't, we don't take it for granted that we were going to be invited. So I'm happy I got invited though. It's, uh, and the rogue has no impact on the game season, though, right? The rogue is just a standalone yeah. competition. Yeah, very it's, cool. Uh, get, just gaining experience, making some money. That's uh, that's uh, that's the goal. Have you been to Austin, Texas? I've no. never been. So oh, that's that, that's, that's really awesome. great too. Yeah. So hold, and like I said, hopefully we'll see you out there. Fern and I plan on on oh, being cool. there. It's been great chatting with you. I always, you know, I want to give you opportunity, any of your sponsors that you want to give a shout out to or anything else, please do. Wit, there, Wit. So what's the deal? Wit's back. Are they the apparel brand of CrossFit again? So they're, no, Noble is. No, they're going to sell the CrossFit stuff. No, the, Wit is going to sell. They're a retailer. Retailer, yeah. Yes. That's, but they're not the game sponsor. That's Noble. Right. But if you're buying CrossFit gear, most likely it's through. It's going to be yeah, through. Yeah. So the CrossFit bottles, I'm guessing they're going to have also, like they sell Noble. So they're probably going to sell the CrossFit Noble shirts. Um, they sell a bunch of the, the, All the, the, the sweet stuff, the cross, like the CrossFit um, gear yeah. is all going to be through with. It's a one-stop shop, which is you like. A code or anything, or are you just an athlete that. Athlete. Yeah, just an athlete. Cool. Any, any other brands you want to give a shout out to? Yeah. Fit A. Fit A. Go Wad. Go Wad. Go Wad's awesome. We go Wad all Are you as manager as well as coach, Caroline? Are you the manager? I do everything. <laughs> She's I do a... product placement. We do this photo shoots. I everything. Yeah. Fit go A, Wad. Go, go Wad. I use both of those products. I love, I mean, I love a, the zero Fit A, especially. 
with you know nothing in it for yeah. me. And then um, I'm happy we're in the U.S. because now because Fit Aid they only have two um, flavors that that can cross the border to Canada. So when I'm in Montreal, I have the the original one and mm-hmm. I have the new strawberry lemonade. But here in the U.S., I have all the products. <laughs> I'm gonna call them and say like. I want Now this, I want this, I want this. Just like, so you don't get the party like, aid and the life aid and all those in uh, Canada? I don't, we no. don't have access to those. Um, so um, now I'm going to try and, like, have a little bit of everything here. Yeah. Very cool. Any other brands, Caroline? Yes. Time Birds. Time Birds. Yeah. yeah. Show them. I have it right here. Boom. Da. It's a it's little a personal little timers. Personal. Oh, sweet. That's so <laughs> cool. Yeah. They're going to turn off. <laughs> Great demo. Uh, it's a, it's basically like a, for those that are only listening and not watching the video, it's yeah. like a mini, it's like a mini clock. It's yeah. a handheld timer. You can do like rounds and like just a counter and things like that. Probably a little less expensive than the big ones for people that have a garage type of thing. Yeah. And they're now you can. They're magnetic, so like you could put it on the rig. Like if we're like calculating stuff, like you can kind of look at his round times and things like I'm that. Get, what is it? Time birds, like the time birds. Bird. Rogue sells them, so you can go directly to the Rogue website and buy the time birds, or you can go directly to the time birds website, depending on where you are. It's only, it's only twenty. Oh wait, no, that's not the right one. I think it's uh, 99? 99. Still, that's a great price for a good clock like that. You know, you. I think most people use their phone and whatnot, but it's always nice just to not have to worry about it. I'm afraid to break my phone. So I'd rather have that. It's magnetic. You can put it on the rig, you can put it on the floor. You can see it well. Like it, it feels uh, It feels like- It feels like a gym. gym. Yeah, so that's cool. If you have like a home gym, you can have it somewhere and it feels like a clock gym, a uh, gym clock. So yeah. yeah. I like it. Well, and any, anything else you guys want to add before we wrap up? I really appreciate you guys being on here. It's been great chatting with both of you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Thank you. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll put this out. Um, leave anybody out. Um, hopefully not. But if you did, let us know. Our girl Katie will also plug in some links for you so so everybody can have the opportunity to check out those, those brands. But Jeff, great chatting with you. Caroline, always great chatting with you. And I uh, look forward to seeing you guys in Austin. Yes, you did. Yes, do. So you never miss an episode of the podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and on all major podcasting platforms at best hour of their day. Thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of the best hour of our day. See you next time.